This sermon, not unlike a few weeks back when Diana Bradley and after the midst of the shock of having lost Dave, told me something about walking in the Lonesome Valley and, and how we don't want to walk that by ourselves. Sometimes it feels like we are. Inspired what I wanted to say that Sunday, this week, Sally Haddix, our worship assistant and, and well, everybody knows Sally. And a text said to me, there's some mornings I just count my blessings. I think you said you'd come from the barn feeding this bevy of cats that Janie continues to provide her to fill up the barn with. And her donkey, Elmer, and her mule, Daisy, She's walking back from the barn, and the sun was coming up, and it was a beautiful day. The wind was blowing, and she just said, sometimes it's just so beautiful, I just want to count my blessings. And I thought about that, and I thought, what a wonderful thing to focus on in this time when it seems that all we hear people talk about is what's wrong. We can't do this. I can't go there. I can't... I can't do the things that I want to do because they say it's not right. It's not good for me. It's not this. It's not that. One thing just leads to another, and it's just, to use a bad analogy, it's kind of like flushing the toilet. It just goes round and round, and it goes round and round, and it just keeps going down. We just keep getting hit by things, one after another after another, until finally it begins to play on not just physically, but it starts to play on you psychologically and spiritually. This poor woe is meism, as I wrote in the in the week's end news this week. I like that word. I like that phrase. Woe is meism. Woe is me because I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, let's count the blessings that we have at this time in the course of our lives and talk about the silver lining and try to get the focus off the cloud. We've always heard there's a silver lining behind every cloud, silver lining within every cloud. But sometimes we're so intent on just embracing the cloud that we fail to see the silver lining. Yesterday when we were at the UK game in Lexington, and Shirley and Kelly were at the Cincinnati Reds game in Cincinnati. It was the same situation. In a stadium, it was blazing hot. If you were in a stadium yesterday afternoon in a confined area, and people all around were just, we would look up to the sky because there were clouds that were blowing by. And when the cloud would cover the sun, it was almost people would actually applaud because the temperature dropped. You could feel the breeze blowing. Well, you would think, well, gosh, the sun was the silver lining. The cloud has covered the silver lining. But in this case, the cloud was the silver lining because of the situation. In most theoretical cases, we don't want to look just at the cloud. We want to get behind the cloud and see the silver lining. In the letter of Paul to Galatians, I'm going to talk about the fifth chapter of that just a little bit here today. In that letter, and this, for those of us who have been studying this and seekers off and on, we have learned across the years, or the sixth chapter, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, the end of the fifth chapter. The end of the fifth chapter. We've learned across the years that, as it is with most biblical writing, the name, on the, the name on the book isn't necessarily who wrote it, although that's who it's attributed to. This is one of the letters, this is one of the letters Paul, that Paul is credited with actually having written. A lot of the others have his name attached to them, but it's really questionable as whether or not he wrote them because they are such a dramatic change in his theology and the way he looks at it. But if you were going to write a book, and it's been done down through the ages, people attribute the name of someone that's well known to it in order to give it more credibility. And the same thing happened here. But this one is Paul, and it's interesting 
that in this chapter at the end of it, and this is not at all what Paul is talking about. I want to make that clear. He's talking about a problem in a church, a problem that things have gone sour and things aren't going well in the church at Galatia, and he wants to help correct that. And in the previous part of the chapter, he goes over all sorts of things to correct their behavior and so forth. But like so many chapters and so many books in the Bible, if it ends or concludes and has this positive, uplifting, we've seen it many times, a benediction at the end of it. And in this particular area, Paul says these words, and I want you to hear them. I'm going to read 5th chapter, verses 22 and 23. I'm leaving out 24. 25 and 26. 22, 23, 25, 26. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, faithfulness, kindness, goodness, and again, faithfulness. Gentleness, self-control, and uniquely, a line that says, against such there is no law. There's no law against those things. We'll look at that in a moment. Then we skip down to 25, 26. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us have no self-conceit, no provoking of one another, no envy of one another. Now, we find in this an upbeat message here in the midst of something that's not so upbeat. One of the unique things that in all of my years of the ministry, all of the sermons that I've done, all of the times that I've, st I find that if you will let the Bible speak to you, if you will leave room in your thinking for the winds of the Holy Spirit to blow through that so that, that you can be influenced, so that you can be moved by what is being said. I have no doubt, as I said, Paul was not talking about what we're going to talk about. He was saying this is something else that you need to focus on because this is in the midst of this situation here that he's trying to deal with in this church. These are things that we need to focus on, and this is where the uniqueness of this book comes in, because if we can interpret, if we can take the message that is sometimes hidden here, we don't have to say, and <laughs> I know, Jane, your, your uh, seminary professors are going to scream loud and long when I say this, shaking her head, <laughs> but pull it out of context. Pull it out what he's talking about and see what the message is that is uniquely speaking to us. That is uniquely speaking to us, and I see that in this particular passage of Scripture. Break it down with me, if you will. If you break it down, these things don't sound to me at all like negative things. They, don't, they call us instead to focus on the blessings, count the blessings, that we have. Start again with me at 22. Fruit of the Spirit is love. One of the most quoted chapters, greatest gift of all is love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. How do these things develop in your lives? How can we focus on things that, that help us look at the positive that's in other people and in other situations, that help us to count the blessings that we have, the people that love us and care about us, the patience that people show with us, with our shortcomings, with the things that we don't do that are satisfactory, the patience, the peace. The joy. We light five candles here at Christmas. Four in the Christ candle. Sally was talking about Christmas not too far away, just a little over three months. In fact, it won't be many months at all that I can see Tony groaning now that we'll be putting up the tree and, and, and we'll be decorating and we'll be putting up the candles. 
and will be lighting these peace, joy, love, and hope. Not in that order. We'll be lighting those candles right here, every one of those things. Peace, joy, love, doesn't have hope. Love, joy, peace. Things that we can focus on that help us to focus our attention on what is good and a good, positive thought. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Then, if we break it down just a little further, he says, I like this where it says uh, about gentleness. Now, what is gentleness? How do you interpret that? This is what my Bible says. Your translation might say something different. But Paul, in, in, the, in what he's dealing with in this chapter, is saying, if you can apply these things to the situation that you're in, then perhaps it can help that situation too. Instead of pointing fingers, being critical, slapping, the, slapping your hands on the pulpit, slapping the Bible up and down on the pulpit. If we can apply these things and look at everyone else's, someone else's situation, what's the situation of their life? What's going on with you? And apply these things, then maybe we can work through some of these things that he's concerned about here at the church at Galatia. Some of these things that are causing the reason that he, helped, that he founded this church, some of those things to be brought back into focus. Gentleness. We don't hear that word used off. Self-control. Self-control applies to a lot of things. That's a positive thought. What we want to remember is the positive. The things that can be positive and uplifting, the good news, the counting of our, mental, many, very, our, our many blessings that all of us have in our lives. We could go around the room today, and if we did, we would find and ask, can you name a blessing? Well, I'm sure we all could. Those out that are watching, that are with us, can name blessings too. Blessings that we can actually see that are happening in our lives. Think about a blessing in your life. What is a blessing that is happening in your life? Focus on what we have. Bob's pointing toward his, his uh, security dog, Abby, who slept all the way through your solo. I have to. She, she loves the sound of your voice, but maybe not sing. <laughs> but she's laying there just quietly. I sing her a lullaby. Sing her a lullaby. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like singing a lullaby. Okay, so you look at each of us have blessings. That's what we want to remember. How do we count the blessings that we are having in our lives? And Paul says here, there is no law against this. There's no law. There's no spiritual law. There's no physical law against things like joy, peace, love, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. There's no law against that. You can't say that there's a stop sign that says, nope, beyond this point, you can't, be, you can't be happy. Beyond this point, you can't be faithful. There's no law that's stopping that. We need to remember that these things help to guide us, I think, toward living a better life, toward thinking better thoughts. Now, if we have these, how in the world can we not be happy? Are you happier since Abby came into your life? Yes. Think of the blessings that you have, things that have come into your life in the midst of the challenges. What has come? We have drawn closer in many ways. Families have drawn closer. People have come to, to appreciate things that we didn't appreciate before. Now when we get together, we can appreciate it. We appreciate what we took for granted. Yesterday I spent, as I said, the hot afternoon with 50,000 of my best friends. And we had a great time watching Kentucky, trying to do what Kentucky does best. 
That yank defeat from the jaws of victory on a team that they should have easily beaten. But we were together. You know, people saying, gosh, I haven't, I haven't seen you forever. I haven't been out. Things that we take for granted. Here's what I'm leaving you with. Count the blessings that God has given you. Count the blessings that touch your life. Count the things that are good and positive that we can be happy about. We've said many times, smiling is easier than frowning. A life is easier than a growl. Things that help people and one another feel better are the blessings of our lives. So, count your many blessings. May we pray? Our Father God, we thank you for the blessings that are in our lives. We thank you here for these words from Paul, which weren't talking about particularly blessings, but yet they were blessings. They are blessings to help the church at that time, to help us as individuals and as a church here. We know that at times that, that our church and our denomination is criticized as being a feel-good church. Well, to me it seems that we have so much today to feel bad about that I'm not necessarily inclined to say that we need to feel, to go to church, to feel worse than we already do. Help us to focus on the blessings. Help us to find ways to reach others. Help us to call, to text, to go by, to see something to help others count their blessings as we count them as a blessing. Bless us as we worship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.